Hello everyone. I welcome you on board flight of Captain Vijay. Can you guess what type of wind would you prefer when flying? Headwinds or tailwinds? Crosswinds or light winds? If you cannot make a wise guess, rest assured, you would know about it after end of this video. So in today's flight, I'll take you through the topic of flying versus winds. So fasten your seat belts as we are ready for takeoff. Wind is not mere presence of air in the atmosphere. Wind is horizontal motion of air. And wind blows due to difference in air pressure between two places or areas. Wind blows from high pressure to low pressure area and are also affected by Coriolis force when covering large distances. And if you are not sure about what is Coriolis force, watch a specific video on Coriolis force posted on my YouTube channel. For a pilot, wind plays an important role in day-to-day -day flying. Wind can be your best friend or your worst enemy depending on specific situation. One example of this is my own experience of flying when I was flying from Jodhpur Air Base in Rajasthan to Hashimara in West Bengal in a fighter jet. Fuel was barely sufficient to make it to the destination with final reserve. During the flight while avoiding weather, some extra fuel was consumed. So as per in-flight calculation, I was sure that I could not make it to the destination with available fuel on board and there was a need to land at alternate aerodrome en route. Almost halfway en route the cross-country flight when I reached near the foothills of Himalayas, I got tailwinds of 120 knots at a height of 10 km, which actually was a westerly jet stream. So 120 knots of tailwinds gave me extra ground speed and I made good my home base Hashimara without a need to land at en route airport. So with my experience of cross country flight one would think that the tailwinds are good. But imagine if you have 120 knots of tailwinds on takeoff. I am very sure no pilot on earth would ever attempt a takeoff in 120 knots of tailwind. So the summary of above story is wind can be favorable sometime and it can work against you in a different situation. So let us discuss first the effect of winds during takeoff and landing since takeoff and landing are the most crucial phase of flight. Every pilot wants and expects light to moderate headwinds during takeoff and landing. How does it help? To understand this you must know the difference between true airspeed and ground speed. True airspeed also called TAS is the speed of aeroplane with respect to the surrounding air without any consideration for the wind. And the ground speed is the speed of aeroplane with respect to the ground. So whenever you have headwinds, aeroplane is pushed back by wind and your speed with respect to the ground decreases. That is your ground speed decreases. And whenever you have tailwinds, it pushes your aeroplane forward and your speed with respect to the ground increases. That is ground speed increases. So the formula for ground speed is TAS plus wind speed in case of tailwinds and TAS minus wind speed in case of headwinds. On takeoff roll, if you have headwinds, while the aeroplane is rolling on the runway, headwinds will give extra dynamic pressure which will assist in generating more lift forces on the wing and reduce the runway length required for takeoff. All the speeds like VMCG, V1, V-rotate, V-liftoff will come early. By early what I mean, you will consume lesser length of runway and lesser time to achieve these speeds as compared to nilwin conditions. Headwinds also help during landing. While landing, your ground speed will be lesser, so ground will move at a slower pace below you and approach will feel comfortable to handle. After flare or round off, the float period will be shorter. After touchdown, the headwinds will assist in aerodynamic braking effect and landing distance will be shorter. So there is a hell lot of advantages. If you have tailwinds, approach will be steep, ground will move faster below you, aeroplane will float for a longer time after round off or flare and the landing distance will be higher since tailwinds will push you forward. So invariably takeoff and landing is always preferred in a headwind condition. Now let's talk about crosswinds. Crosswinds tend to push the aeroplane away from the center line of runway during takeoff and landing and it, and it requires control inputs to keep the aeroplane on intended path and strong crosswind can get 
very tricky to handle for student pilots as well as experienced ones so other than take off and landing phase of flight we would always love to have tailwinds this will give us extra ground speed and we can cover larger distances in shorter time frame with the help of winds and we will be able to save fuel also flying hazards if you talk about the flying hazards associated with winds then turbulence and low level wind shear are the two primary hazards which are associated with winds having understood effect of winds during takeoff and landing now let us discuss some basics related to reporting of winds winds are always reported with respect to true north and not magnetic north it is reported with direction and speed both direction of wind is reported from where the wind is coming from for example 090 10 knots means wind is blowing from east going to west at a speed of 10 knots wind vector is indicated by three arrows on wind charts it is shown in the shape of a feather and direction is from feather to the point and speed is indicated by different symbols indicating either 5 10 or 50 knots as shown on the screen wind is said to be veering when the direction changes clockwise and backing when the direction changes anti clockwise gust is a local increase in wind speed by more than 10 knots lasting for more than 1 minute squall is increase in wind speed over a large area like in a thunderstorm lull is sudden decrease in wind speed in gale wind speed is more than 33 knots in hurricane wind speed is more than 63 knots and surface wind is measured by an instrument called anemometer which is placed at a height of 10 meter or 33 feet above ground level so hope this video has helped you in understanding the relevance of winds in flying different types of winds should be covered in a separate video altogether with this we have arrived at our destination subscribe the channel for more such informative videos do not forget to comment below about how did you like the video or if you want me to cover some specific topic hope to see you on board again for the next flight till then happy landings